Good afternoon. Welcome to Exploiting Qualcomm WLAN and Modem Over the Air in Lagoon GHI with Xilin Gong and Peter P. Before you begin, a few brief notes. Stop by the business hall located in Mandalay Bay, Oceanside, and Shoreline Ballrooms on Level 2. The Black Hat Arsenal is in the business hall on Level 2. Lunch is in Bayside AB from 1 to 2.30. Don't forget the merchandise store on Level 2 and session recordings from SOK. They have a desk on every level. Thanks for putting your phone on vibrate. It makes it easier for the rest of us to ignore the ringing while you wait for the voicemail to pick up. Please use the microphones in the aisles for any questions following the talk. And with that, let us welcome our speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending our talk. Uh, in this talk, we will uh, uh, share how we exploit Qualcomm WLAN and the modem over the air. And uh, finally, we compared the uh, Linux kernel. Uh, about us, uh, we are uh, security researchers, uh, both from Tencent and Blade team. The Tencent and Blade team uh, is founded by Tencent Security Platform Department in 2017. We focus on security research in the areas of AIoT, mobile devices, cloud visualization, uh, blockchain, as you see. Uh, this is the agenda. Uh, first, uh, we will introduce some related work. Uh, WLAN security is a hot topic in recent years. The low exploit on Broadcom Wi-Fi ship is on 2017, and this year on malware. Today, our talk is about Qualcomm. As we know, uh, there is no public exploit on Qualcomm Wi-Fi ship. So how about the Qualcomm Wi-Fi? Uh, there, there is a, a simple illustration about the architecture of Qualcomm Wi-Fi. Uh, there are two important things. The first one is that uh, start from Snapdragon 835. The WLAN firmware is integrated into the baseband subsystem. The WLAN and the modem firmware are run in the same processes now. The second thing is that uh, you can see uh, in Qualcomm's uh, implementation, most of the function uh, is implemented in the Linux kernel driver named QC ACLD. There are plenty of uh, vulnerabilities in this driver. Uh, that is the well-known WLAN host vulnerabilities. Uh, our talk is not about the WLAN host uh, issues. Uh, it is about the WLAN, WLAN firmware itself. Uh, there is no public talk on the Qualcomm WLAN firmware previously. So how about the security status? Uh, we will answer this question. Uh, before we go into the details of WLAN and the modem firmware, uh, we need to introduce the debugger we use to debug the firmware. Uh, this is the key step for us to analyze the modem and WLAN firmware. Uh, you can see there are MBA and the modem images in file system. Uh, MBA.MBN is the MBA image. Modem.MDT and modem.bxx uh, modem images. These images have a specific format according to Qualcomm's official document. Uh, like application processor, modem processor also has its secure boot flow. Uh, the flow is like this. Firstly, Linux kernel will load MBA and the modem images from file system to physical memory. And the second, uh, Linux kernel will set the start physical address of MBA and the research modem processor. Then uh, the modem PBL in the ROM will verify the MBA image. If, if a success, it will jump to the MBA code. Uh, finally, MBA will read and verify modem images. If a success, it will jump to the modem main code. Uh, the pure boot function in Linux kernel describes the boot flow of a modem. It will load MBA.MBN and the modem images to physical memory, then trigger MBA and the modem images to be verified and executed in the modem processor. 
Linux kernel can restart a modern processor at any time. Uh, it will hit this function, peer boot, each time when, resta when restarted. Uh, the vulnerability we use to bypass the modern secure boot is a time of check, time of use bug. When MBA verifying modern images, it doesn't lock the physical address region. Means that Linux kernel can still modify the modern images. So after MBA verified one image, Linux kernel can modify it, uh, which means we have bypassed the secure boot check. Uh, the uh, the back POC is quite simple. Uh, this is the uh, div file of pure boot function. We just change the uh, the pure boot function. We let the peer reclaim mem function after we have modified the modern images. Uh, after we have ability to modify the modern in images, we can inject debug server to modern side. Uh, we injected uh, demonstrate, demonstrate uh, to wait for commands from Linux side. The commands and the re results uh, will be exchanged uh, using shared physical memory. So we can issue de debug command to debug WLAN and the modern firmware because they are in both, both modern processor. Uh, now we have the debugger. Uh, we can analyze the modern and the WLAN much easier. Uh, so uh, Shilin will introduce the following details. Okay. Uh, so I'll introduce the reverse engineering and uh, the vulnerability and exploitation. And then finally, we'll explore it into the next kernel. Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's review the architecture of Qualcomm WLAN. The WLAN is now in the baseband and the hexagon architecture. So that we can analyze the WLAN and if we control the WLAN, we will control the baseband subsystem, okay? Uh, here is a simple figure for the WLAN architecture. And from the figure, we can see that the Qualcomm WLAN firmware is not the full for Mac firmware. Most of the functions of WLAN are implemented in the Linux driver, uh, here, the QC, A, C, L, D. And the firmware itself is quite simple and just leading to a smaller attack surface the work to be done in the firmware is called offload. You mean offload? The merger attack surface, I think, is in the offload handler. It's here, in the offload handler, the non data offload handler, and the data handler. And the offload handler will inspect the OTA package. And if interested in, you will pass the package and do some job accordingly. So the attack could happen here when the offload handler pass the package. The offload handler is, in fact, a table with some different handlers according to the status of the Wi-Fi. Okay. okay. Give an example for the how a Wi-Fi access point is dis displayed on the Wi-Fi list. Okay. When you open the Wi-Fi on the UI, the Android framework will issue command to the driver, and the driver will command the firmware to scan the nearby Wi-Fi hotspot. Finally, the WLAN firmware will register the handlers into the offload handler table. You can see, into this table. And when other access point or hotspot send a package, the hand handler will receive and pass the incoming packet, and if the packet is a management beacon, the firmware will forward it to the Linux, and uh, the driver will pass the package and uh, extract the SSID and uh, notify the user space application. And uh, finally, you'll see the Wi-Fi point hotspot is displayed here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have some basic things about the WLAN. Let's start with reverse engineering. The firmware is located here and loaded by the modern. Okay, so this file, uh, you can find it from the phone. 
And uh, here is the dis disassembler. And uh, Qualcomm has provided us the wonderful SDK and the instruction reference here, if you are interested in. Okay. The WLAN firmware has about 18, uh, 8,000 functions. Uh, it's a difficult task to reverse these functions without any knowledge. Uh, luckily, Qualcomm has given us some hints. The most useful thing is that the string table. With the string table, we can find a lot of useful function names. And another important thing is the import function here. Yeah? Because the WLAN firmware is loaded by the modern as a shared library, so the WLAN is using a lot of functions from the modern and leave the function name in the import function table. That's quite useful. Okay. Okay. Uh, the target we are going to reverse engineering is the offload handler. It's the module tag surface over the air. Uh, the main question is how can we find the offload handler? Uh, the answer is that you can first find the string from the string table. That is the uh, long data offload, and then check the reference of the string to find the function named long data handler. And this function is actually a very big loop. It will fetch each atom from the table and call the handler. Each handler is a function. This loop will call it from the table. Mm -hmm. Here is a sample of the outflow the handler in the table. Uh, the key to reverse is to find the data point uh, from the figure. We can see that it's quite simple. The data point is a point combined by the four bytes, uh, 58, 59, 50A, 50B. This is the package of data over the air. If you send the data package using the Wi-Fi dongle or other device, you'll find that your data is here, in this, in this point. So every offload handler has the same structures. Uh, I think this is the most important slide in this talk. With the sample offload handler, you can just simply work through all the other handlers and analyze how the handler processes the package and hunt vulnerabilities. Yes, this is the most important slide, I think, in this talk. The data pointer here, okay. You can see here this data pointer, and we fetch one byte from the data and test the C, test the N the C. From the specification of WLAN, we know we test this byte means to test whether this packet is a management beacon. Okay, so uh, now we can start the exploitation. Uh, this is the overall load map. Uh, we are here now. We we have controlled uh, Wi-Fi dongle or something else could send out a uh, Wi-Fi signal. Uh, we are going to compromise with the WLAN. Yes. Uh, this is over the air, and uh, then we are escape into modern, and uh, finally we are get into the Linux kernel to complete the full full exploit chain. Okay. Uh, before we go, let's first check the mitigation status of WLAN to set up an exploitation strategy. From the table, uh, we can see that the uh, heap protections, uh, heap ASLR. Uh, heap cookie, uh, which makes the heap overflow issue pretty difficult to, to exploit. Okay. And uh, you know, there are stack cookie and uh, there are friend limit and uh, the return address protection. So we are unable to use the traditional ROP. Uh, ROP, you are unable to use it because the protections. And also there are DEP. Uh, so we are unable to execute the, uh, in the data segment. And also, we are unable to write to the code segment directly. Uh, if we want to run arbitrary code, we should change the page attribution first. Okay. Uh, there are so many medications, but we are still very lucky. Uh, you can see the code ASR is not enabled. And the global data 
data OSL are not enabled. So the code is fixed uh, in, a, in a fixed address and the glo global data is in a fixed address. And CFI is also not enabled. So although we are unable uh, to use the ROP, we can use something uh, called a function oriented programming that is FOP to bypass the uh, uh, to do the job like the ROP, uh, that is FOP, uh, you will see later in the exploitation that all the gadgets in the FOP is con constructed by a series of function calls. And uh, also, we are quite lucky, the issue we found is in the global data area. Yes, the overflow we found is in the global data, data area. So there is no SLR, and we can overflow to a fixed address. Okay, uh, let's check the vulnerability. Uh, the vulnerability is CVE uh, 2019 10540. Uh, uh, already been announced in the Android and the Qualcomm August security bulletin. Uh, already been patched. Uh, if you are interested in about the detailed information of the vulnerability, please check the. Uh, security bulletin in August 2019. Uh, this issue already have been fixed. Okay. Uh, this issue is in one of the offload handler. Uh, you know this table. Uh, it's uh, in one of this table, and uh, it's in the pre auth frame handler. The pre auth means you don't have to connect to a specified Wi-Fi point. Uh, you just turn on the Wi-Fi. We are leading to one level, okay? pre auth frame handler, okay? Uh, I will translate it and uh, simplify the assembler code into C code. So you can see here, this is a buffer. A global buffer has uh, 10 items, and uh, this is a loop uh, which you copy as much of data, data as possible into the global buffer. Uh, there is no check on the data count and send uh, 11 items will cause the global buffer overflow. Uh, this is quite straightforward. And uh, you, okay, from the vulnerability code, we know that each loop it will copy OX44 bytes uh, trigger the overflow. We can override the content after this point, uh, the global buffer plus B0 and into this the point we are overflow into all this data, data segment, okay? Because there's no SLR, the GS address of the overflow data is fixed. So it's quite convenient for us to do the exploitation, okay? And analyze the data near the overflow address, we can quickly find out that there is a very good data point at offset C, we overflow from here, and offset to C, there is a very good data point. Uh, we call it the smart point, which point to a very useful data. If we overwrite the smart point, we can do a lot of good job. Okay. Let's check the usage of the smart point. Okay. To better understand the code, I will transfer the code to C and simplify them at this figure. You can see. This is the small point, we can overwrite it. And this is the packet we send, the OTL packet we send through the Wi-Fi dongle. This is our data, we control this data. And this is the overwrite, overflow data we control the small point. There are two, uh, uh, two conditions, two tests. The first test is that we test the destination whether the noise the bit is equal to one. And the second test is that the uh, smart point plus six equal to the micro address of the sender. If both the test pass, uh, we can write to the two bytes, three bytes, C, D, and 14, and three bytes, so, okay. Let's see again. We overwrite this this address, this smart point, and we do test. If the test pass, 
we write to the three points. Okay. So now we got an arbitrary write primitive with the two constraints. The first constraint is the beta zero, and the second constraint is the mark address. Uh, at all, the mark address is controlled, controlled by ourselves. So this is not, uh, in fact, not a constraint. We can um, set our data, data send with the mark address equal to this point. So the only constraint is this, this one. The lowest bit should equal to one. Okay. If we pass this test, we can write two bytes or three bytes into the destination we are interested in. Okay. To summarize, I will do this picture. Okay. There are actually two steps. The first step, we are send a packet to check the overflow and overwrite the content of smart point to our, our destination we are interested in. And the second step, we are send a, another packet to use the new smart point to compare and if pass, we are write something into the new destination. So now we can write two bytes using the uh, vulnerability, two bytes, two arbitrary bytes, okay. So another question is how uh, a meaningful address or data is over the four bytes. Now we can write two bytes. How to write four bytes? Uh, this figure shows the answer. Answer is quite simple. Just uh, using the write trace. The first time we write to the low two bytes, and the second time we write to the high two bytes. Okay. Just uh, move the smart point uh, at once offset by two, and uh, you see we can write the whole four bytes. Okay. And there is another question. Uh, you know we have a constraint. The destination we want to write should have this bit set to one. So how about if this bit is zero? Um, the answer is that we could search up to check whether we can set this bit on. We search up and see, hey, yes, this there is the one, so we can write to this address, and then we write to the target we want to, okay. So now we got a a powerful global write primitive. Although we have the constraint, we should have a bit of velocity to one, but it is still very powerful. Let's see how we use the global write to control the PC and R velo. Uh, the basic method is here. We search the full memory space and find out the meaningful place where satisfy the condition reachable by our remote packet and uh, that is and, uh, interesting by us. Uh, for example, you can see here, uh, there is a PC and Arduino. Uh, if we could control overwrite this four bytes and overwrite this address, we can control the PC and Arduino, okay? Uh, this is not very difficult to find a place similar to this. This table, you can see we have a lot of uh, beta, beta zero equal to one. So we can uh, move the smart point down, move down, move down, and finally we can write to this address using our arbitrary write. Okay. So now have, we have controlled the PC and uh, R zero. We can uh, we can do some useful things. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to remove the constraint, uh, remove the constraint, that is remove the condition. So we want to transform this global write to an arbitrary write. Okay? The global write we have is still a lot very convenient because the place we want to write should have the lowest bit set to one. Uh, generally, we the better transform it to an arbitrary write. Okay, as we have controlled the PC and the other, we can uh, trigger some FOP to do the job. The FOP, you know, function-oriented programming. Okay, we control the PC and other, we set the other to our payload, and then trigger this this uh, 
function and check this target. Now finally, you will see that we have a right arbitrary byte to arbitrary address. Okay. okay. So we can do arbitrary write. Uh, we can run some other useful FOPs to do more complex job. Uh, to do the job, we have three steps. The first one, we overwrite one of the useful function point is uh, arbitrary write. The point should be able to trigger from the OTL packet. And the second one, we overwrite one of the parameter uh, to generally R0. We overwrite the uh, data point of R0. Okay. We change it to our payload and the step third step, we send the payload packet and trigger the function, then our FOP gadget is running. Uh, for example, how we uh, modify the attribution of the page, you know we have DEP, so we have to uh, modify the attribution of the memory page. So now we can uh, run useful FOP to do the job. Okay. The function we're going to call is the create mapping function. It maps the arbitrary physical address to the virtual address we want and set the specified permission. Okay, for example, the, uh, this address 936A is mapping to B00 with the permission. Rx, that is read only and executable. It's in the code segment. segment. So by checking this function, we can map it to another, another address. Here we use 4242 to RWX, that is the full permission, read, write, and executable. So now we have a page that is RWX. Yeah, we can write to it and execute on this page. Okay, so another thing we want to do is to copy our shell code into the page we just map, map out. Just, we just want to copy the shell code to 4242. Uh, it's quite simple. We can do arbitrary write and we have a page that is a, a lot of choice. Uh, the thing I do, is to overwrite one of the handler in the offload handler table so that the R1 is originally set to the packet we send and the data length is R2. So we overwrite the PC, the function point, and the data point. Then we can copy our shell code to, to the R0 we want to. That is the 4242 we just mapped out to be RWX. Okay. So we copy the shell code to 4242, we are able to okay, trigger the shell code. So now we can uh, run an arbitrary code in the WM firmware. Okay. Just uh, trigger the shell code in this address. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we are in the WLAN. Uh, the next step is to Escape into the model. Okay. Oh, this is the load map, and we are now here. Uh, oh no, from from here to here. Now we are here. Mm. We are going to the modern. Okay. Okay. The WLAN and the modern are in different processes in the base binary system. Okay. So here, this is the QRT OS kernel, and uh, there's a different processes. So how can we get into the model? And there is actually some dangerous actions we can do uh, just in this table. Okay, some dangerous, dangerous actions in the WLAN we can do. Uh, for example, uh, we can try to write the modern memory directly in the WLAN. Also, we can try to call the modern functions, and we can try but it will fail, fail. I think there may be some protections. Uh, I don't know why this, this is illegible, okay. And also, we are unable to modify the 
memory, um, memory attribution of the modern uh, during the TLB instruction. Uh, we are unable to do this. Do this will cause the um, uh, modern crash. Okay. But finally, we have found out that we can map the memory of modern into WLAN direct directly. You know, the WLAN and the modern are in different uh, uh, virtual uh, address space. But we can map the mod modern memory into WLAN. Okay, just like this figure. Originally, the modern physical address of modern is mapping to the virtual address of modern itself, and WLAN to the WLAN itself. But now, we can map the modern memory into WLAN uh, address space directly, so that after we do the mapping, we can uh, modify the uh, uh, memory space of modern to RWX in the WLAN, and so that we can change the code of modern. And ob obviously, we can uh, run arbitrary code in the WLAN, or uh, in the modern. So now we are getting into modern. Okay, so let's see how to escape into the Linux kernel from modern. Okay, so we are here. We are in the uh, modern now, and we are going to here to the Linux kernel. Uh, the baseband subsystem is on a separated chip, uh, not on the main chip that Linux kernel running. There are a lot of interface between baseband the subsystem and the, the Linux kernel. Uh, each of the uh, interface is an attack surface. Uh, for example, there are many WLAN host issues in Android security bulletin every month. Most of them are firmware to Linux kernel vulnerabilities. These issues could be used to escape in from the baseband into Linux kernel. And there are also Petition attack surface from more than into high priority the process, process and also maybe into the trust them. Trust them. If you are interested, interesting, you can try. Okay. Uh, uh, the vulnerability we are using is the CVE 2019 10538. Okay, in 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 one of the attack surface. Okay. This issue already been fixed in the August Android security briefing. And if you are interested about the detail, please check the uh, August Android security briefing. Uh, you can find the code diff. It's already pu public now. You, the code diff. You can check the code diff. Okay. Uh, it's just add, add some check for the incoming data packet from the modem in the kernel driver. Uh, there are some check if, uh, okay. Uh, actually, it's about the memory management of the Qualcomm multiprocessor architecture. Uh, the memory man management is quite a big topic, in fact. Uh, here, uh, you need to know that two things. The Linux master model, Linux master model, and the SMMU, the Linux master model means that the Linux decide the owner of the memory. Uh, for example, the Venus uh, owns this this memory. So how to get the memory by Venus? Actually, Linux will assign assign this memory to Venus. Uh, before Linux assign it to Venus, Venus is unable to touch this memory. Okay, so after Linux have assigned the memory to Venus, the SMMU will protect it to uh, um, to uh, protect it. And if the modern or, or other uh, subsystem want to access into this memory, the core system will crash. That is the SMMU doing. It protects the memory to make sure the memory assignment by Linux is wake up as expected. Okay. So another another example of this memory is owned by the modern. So Windows and Linux they are unable to or touch this memory. 
okay? But the job you, you done by the Linux, Linux will de decide the address and the, the, the owner of this memory. Okay? This is the Linux master model and the SMMU protection. Okay? So uh, the issue here, uh, uh, 103, 10538 is here uh, in the memory management. Uh, there is actually a mystery logic. Generally, Linux itself will, will decide the address and the size to assign to other peripheral subsystem. But here, you can see uh, the modern have uh, sent an address and the size to Linux. And then Linux will assign it to modern directory without any check. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> this address is decided by the modern. Uh, in Linux master model, it should be decided by the Linux itself. But here, this mystery code <laughs> seems uh, very, uh, very wonderful for us to explore it because we can map uh, any physical me memory uh, designed by us because we have control of the modern. We can uh, use it. Any physical memory, we can here tell the Linux if hey, we want this memory, then the Linux will assign this memory to us, so we we can open this memory. If we tell the Linux to uh, give the code code of the Linux kernel to us, it will do as we want. So this is the vulnerability. We tell the Linux that we want the code code. Uh, space of, of Linux, so Linux give to us, and so that we can we can modify the content of the kernel code. So we have an arbitrary memory write of the Linux kernel. That's the vulnerability. Okay, uh, please note that this vulnerability is pretty powerful. We just uh, bypass the any medications in the kernel because we are using the physical physical memory. That uh, we just uh, send the me physical memory, and uh, we can bypass the KSR and the other medication. Any anything use this? Okay. Okay. So we have break into the kernel, uh, but before we watch the demo, I would like to talk a little more about the stability of the exploitation, uh, because we are send the package over the air. It's the widely the package, okay? There are some, some stability issues. Uh, when I do the test, I'm using a Wi-Fi dongle, just, uh, just like this one, and uh, uh, the SCAPI soft, software to send out the payload, payload here. But uh, when I do the test, the package loosen it is very high, almost the, uh, Ninety percent of players are lost. That make our exploitation uh, very unstable and to crash every time. <laughs> uh, we are unable to complete the uh, whole whole exploitation exploitation chain. Okay, okay? but uh, the reason why losing packs is quite complex for me. Finally, I have found the solution. I have a Google Pixel Two uh, with uh, Surf Dragon inside. Uh, which you could send and uh, receive packages normally. Uh, surely, the Pixel 2 could solve the problem I encounter and send the package correctly. So, uh, how about we use the function that the Pixel 2 is using to send out the package? Okay, you can fork the function in the firmware which send the specified package we want on Pixel 2 we replace the content of the package to our attack payload. Okay, that is the solution. Finally, we are using the Pixel 2 to attack the Pixel 2 XL. Yeah, we send out our payload using the Pixel 2, and the target is the Pixel 2 XL. And, uh, maybe you ask how we fork the function in the firmware. And it's another complex story. Uh, actually, we, we don't have enough time to talk about it today. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, finally, we are here. Uh, 
we use an appeal to into the WLAN and into modern and into Linux kernel. This is the full exploit chain. Okay. Uh, let's watch the demo. I don't know how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. No, no. Uh, directly play it. Can Can you see? Okay. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's explain something before we go. Uh, this is the pixel two. You can see well. The, this is the attacker. This is the phone we have compromise. Uh, we, we own, and this is the target, the timer, the pixel two XL. Okay. Now we are going to send the packet. Uh, we uh, prepare prepare the attack on the pixel two. Yeah, you can see explore start. Uh, we are sending out the packet. Okay. Uh, the first payload. Is uh, one um, one hundred and forty three lines. Okay, that still send the packet. Okay. The uh, pixel two XL is G eight six. Okay, you can see that the SE Linux is enforcing, and we are unable to uh, use the D message from on the a uh, shell, uh, we, are, we are in the shell, okay? So the pixel two is sending packets. Okay. We can, the, the, the whole process need uh, about three, three minutes, uh, but we, I don't think we have to wait. Uh, let's speed up, speed up, okay? okay. Attack is not finished, you can see the SD mix is still enforcing. Let's uh, speed up about uh, three minutes. Okay. Okay. The portion uh, done at uh, this time. Okay. Let's check uh, check the wheel out. Okay. Mm. Uh, just wait for minutes. Okay, you can see it's permissive. So we have fully controlled the Linux kernel and set, up, set the SE Linux to permissive. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are still in the shell, but we have controlled the Linux kernel. Okay. Now we can read the D message, print out the kernel message. Okay. Okay, this is the demo. Okay. Okay, and the future works. Uh, there are still lots of mystery in WLAN. So we just uh, reverse the engineer in a small part of the code. Uh, lots of the um, functions of the WLAN are unknown. And how to find the WLAN firmware and uh, how to transfer the instruction to C. Uh, maybe mm. uh, this is a timeline. We report the first issue on the, uh, February the 14th, and uh, Qualcomm and uh, the Google response very quickly. And uh, uh, now this uh, issue have already been fixed in the August security briefing. Okay, and this is our talk. Uh, you just remember this this figure. Uh, we run WLAN to modern and uh, to Linux kernel. And uh, also we talk about how to hunt vulnerabilities in the WLAN. Okay, you remember the data pointer. The data pointer we are using. Okay. Also we know how to debug the baseband. If you want to uh, future research, you can use the debugger. Okay, okay. that's all. Thank you. Uh,